This video is the last for now in our design pattern series, and in it we'll go through an action or fighting game combo system that integrates the design patterns we've explored so far. We wanted to make a project that can meet you at the other end of exploring the ebook and design patterns videos. So this video presumes you have some understanding of the design patterns because our aim is to help you integrate the patterns together. For those who'd like to follow along in detail, you can find the pattern combo project on GitHub at the link below. Before we look at any scripts, we'll start with an overview. The combo system has two main sides. An action side, which is for you to extend to any game you want. It has the arcade style action or fighting game combos. In a display side, when we press buttons, we have a visual log of what was pressed, including combos for which we have a cheat sheet on the top right. So let's talk a bit about cohesion and coupling. In our system, each component within the action and display categories has high cohesion. There's a diagram at the beginning of the ebook that illustrates loose coupling and high cohesion. This system is an example of that concept. In fact, to show you how these two sides are loosely coupled, if you don't want the visual highway of buttons, you can delete the display side and nothing will break. The display side doesn't work without the action side, however, so it does depend on something the action side is doing, but that's by design. With the two parts of the system in mind, let's do a quick overview of the system diagram. On the action side, the entry point is Gameplay Action Initializer. It sets up the foundational gameplay controls and provides the necessary resources to the action controllers. The button action controller and d-pad action controller handle button and directional pad inputs, translating them into commands called action commands. As an example, we have an X button action command or a d-pad right action command. You might want to rename these to punch or forward, whatever fits your game. The controllers use a gameplay action command invoker to invoke the execute action. This combo system doesn't delay actions, like you may want to delay an action to check for combos first. How that's done really depends on what you're building, but since the actions are encapsulated as commands, the framework is there for you to delay commands if you want. The next step in the flow is the combo queue manager, which is given commands to be added to a sequence. This manager manages the sequence of inputs using timers. It prepares the sequence for combo recognition. The heart of the combo system, or maybe the brain, is the combo match engine, which is responsible for analyzing the queued inputs, and it uses the strategy pattern to evaluate the sequences against the combo rules. We didn't do a video on the strategy pattern, so we'll take a closer look at it later in the video. Once a combo is recognized, the combo action command factory is used to generate specific action commands based on the identified combo. The factory pattern will create an appropriate action command, like a jump kick command. Finally, when a combo action is executed, we trigger events like a jump kick combo event that other things can subscribe to using the observer pattern. All right, that's the action side. Let's check out the display side. This side structurally mirrors the action components. Similar to their action counterparts, the button display controller and d-pad display controller take input actions and encapsulate them as display commands. Display commands use a different command interface than action commands, but it's pretty similar. Display commands are responsible for specific aspects of visual representation. For example, the direction pad display commands activate or reset the direction pad display as needed. The button display commands interact with the display pool manager, which optimizes the performance by reusing button display objects in the visual notes highway, to borrow a term from rhythm games. We also have a scriptable object that contains the colors for each button. Button display is on a prefab called gameplay button that when enabled takes care of the rest. The final piece is the combo display command handler. This component visually represents combo executions in response to combo events being published. It acts on the published combo events embodying the observer side of the observer pattern. This separation from the action side underscores the system's decoupling. The combo display is solely focused on the presentation, unconcerned with how combos are generated. Let's walk through the scripts focusing on the journey of a button press. We'll especially take a closer look at the Combo Action Queue Manager and the Combo Match Engine. During Awake, gameplay controls are initialized by the Gameplay Action Initializer. There should be only one instance of the Input Action c -sharp Wrapper class generated by the Input Action Asset. This is why the display side doesn't work without the action side. It needs these gameplay controls. In the Button Action Controller, Action Command Handler methods subscribe to input events. When the X button is pressed, a handler method is invoked, a corresponding command is created, added to the combo sequence in the queue manager, and executed using the gameplay action command invoker. 
The button action command script has all the action commands for you to implement. Right now, they're empty. Let's take a look at the queue manager where the button press is added to the queue. On awake, the queue manager initializes the combo sequence, the queue of gameplay action commands, and it initializes the combo match engine. The update method includes some timers that start as soon as there are commands in the queue. Our combo system uses a dynamic time window, extending the combo time window opportunity when combo eligible buttons are pressed. This approach allows for adaptability to various skill levels or fine tuning, like if you want certain buttons to extend the combo window more than others. To optimize performance, we check if a button press is eligible as a first button of any combo before adding it to the sequence. This step was added to reduce the load on the combo match engine, ensuring that it only processes sequences with a valid first button. The oldest command of the queue is trimmed if the sequence exceeds a certain length, currently set to six commands. When a combo eligible command is added, we run check and execute combo in the match engine. The match engine initializes combo rules, each with properties like combo length and conditions for the first input. In check and execute combo, we get the sequence and check it against the list of rules. Combo detection involves converting the queue to an enumerable to efficiently parse the sequence, identifying valid combos. For example, if the player presses A, B, X, up, and B quickly, assuming that the first button is combo eligible, the system checks each subsequence. So A, B is checked, not a combo. B, X, not a combo. X up, not a combo. But up B, yes. That's a valid combo for the up B jump kick. In the combo up B rule, the concrete strategy and the strategy pattern, the isMatch method checks if the first action in the sequence is a D-pad up command and the second a B button action command. So we can see here how the command pattern's capability to record a sequence of player actions can be elegantly combined with the strategy pattern's capability to evaluate that sequence of commands. Once a sequence meets the criteria defined by our strategy, that is, a valid combo is identified, the factory pattern is employed to create an outcome a jump kick command. These combo commands invoke events. So while combo events help make the display and action sides decoupled, the queue manager and match engine are tightly coupled together. They work in concert like components of a singular piece of equipment. And that's the system. Hopefully this medium-sized nutshell summary helps you work your way around the project easier and serves as a useful example for how to orchestrate the patterns for various systems you might build in your games. Overall, thanks so much for joining us for this design pattern series. 